Jehovah, brilha em mim. Brilha a luz que é no meu viver. Please stand by. We'll be streaming live soon. Good morning. It's good to be with you this morning. This is a snowy place that uh, gets cold in the morning at six o'clock in the morning. And I want to I want to share with you today on the the power of a prophetic testimony. The power of a prophetic testimony. My scripture comes from the uh, the tenth chapter of Matthew. On the 18th verse, it says, And you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. Meaning, take the opportunity to witness to them and the Gentiles. Every person who honors God and follows God's direction as to a prophetic utterance or a counseling thought or a uh, 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 sharing and trying to, to help others and edifying, building, and comfort others. And be in this ministry that you have constantly talking to others and talking to people in need is, is, is exposed to persecution. This much convicts you living this way or perhaps causes you to be concerned of having a prophetic mouth. The result of that will come with a lot of, a lot of uh, not a lot, but there is persecution in the process. In, in verse 19, persecution is an offense against the Holy Spirit. He says, but when they delivered you up, not if, but when they deliver you up. Notice the clock here. Verse 19 of Matthew 10. Take no thought on how you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. Notice that. What he is saying is that the Holy Spirit, at that particular moment, you'll be able to respond to that person. And so persecution is, is, is an offense against the Holy Spirit. It, but the prophetic will save you. The prophetic will give you what to say. You don't have to think about it or to be nervous about it. It has to do with a confrontation with someone in your church who just don't, don't accept your experience with God. We talked much about experiences with God in different ways and, and how, how it differs from others. is a, a, a time of, uh, of checking what happened to you and what happened to me and, and share it. But in that moment, in that same hour, God will give you what to speak. Notice that it's a manifestation of the Holy Spirit which confers and documents and increases the, uh, the power in it that prophesying is a manifestation. So if you're being persecuted and you're being brought in to, to be judged, uh, at that same hour, God will give you what to say. Now, listen to this because this, this is very important. For it is not you who speak. It's not you who speak. The prophetic separates God's manifestation from your thoughts. Uh, We've been talking this here in the office. That when the Holy Spirit is involved, there's got to be a separation from your brain and what you want to say and what you want to hear. So, So listen to verse 20 because it's a clear indication on how God says, this is the way I do things. For it is not you who speaks. So as you speak, it doesn't come from you. It comes from from the Holy Spirit. 
which speaks in you. Now, that's the separation between what you think and what God says through you without your permission. He just simply say it. I hope that you get this, this verse uh, 20 because it's very important. Now, family is first. And so Matthew is considering now the impact of a testimony because a prophetic testimony is the title of today, Bible study. How to be able to handle family. Why is family come out of the picture at this stage of the game? Because the bloodline of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is directly related between father and son, grandson and granddaughter. It comes from father, grandfather, and grandmother to father and mother to you and your wife and to your children. It's a bloodline that travels directly. The impact of the Holy Spirit in my life has affected my children. I haven't said a thing, a thing to them. It just, it just affected them. And so Matthew considers that and says on verse 2, and the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise against their parents and cause them to put, put to death. In other words, animosity against Christ and the cross is greater than the love for the loved ones. The animosity, the conflict between a, a, a man chosen by God will affect the children. Now, the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. That's the extreme. But if your children are struggling, if there is a, 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 a child that you have that is attempting suicide, there is a, 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 a son that you have who is lost in the world, most uh, people just simply lose total f faith in that, that there's got to be a redemption on this case. I serve the Lord, I I'm, have a prophetic life, and look at my children. Now, I want to tell you this. People that God has called to serve him are going to be blessed. It's a matter of time. I had a brother that for a period of 20 years wouldn't talk to me. We kiss each other now, and we are blessed. God changed everything. It takes time to change, but the expression of a demon is the end of it. The expression of anger and bitterness and resentment will end. If it shows up, it's the final moment of that oppression to be dealt with by the Holy Spirit. So the prophetic life is not something that you punish for, for to be involved in it. It is, it is a question of eternal salvation to your very children. All right, so family will become a battleground in the prophetic life. Let me say it again. Family will, will, will become a, a battleground in the prophetic life. If there's trouble in the aunt and the mother and the brother and the sister, it's because God is about to do something. Pay attention to that. It begins to rattle. Get in it. And you're going to see a change in that family. But when people hear problems within family, they separate and go their separate ways, and, and they ignore that God is doing something, and the Holy Spirit is quenched. Okay. Let's go to... Uh, uh, Chapter 10, verse 23, uh, 22. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. So persecution will continue until the second coming of Christ. But those who endured will be blessed. So now, what do you mean by that? It simply means... That if you are struggling with a situation, you're struggling with a, 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 something that has bothered you in your mind for a long time. I have situations in my life that, that uh, in, in, in two years have not been divide, decided. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a tormenting thing, and, uh, and you begin to live your life. If you endure past through that moment of testing, then... God will bless you before you think twice. But you have to understand that this explosion in the family is, is, 
It's going to happen. It is, it is, if you have a prophetic life and a testimony about Jesus, that he saved your life and blessed you, then family becomes a problem. Okay, pay attention to that. Let's go to verse 24. Now, uh, verse 23 first. It says, but when they persecute you in this city, meaning there is persecution. Look, do you remember the scripture says that, that the prophet is not accepted in his own home? You remember Matthew speaking? The prophet is not accepted in his own home. And so I live in Athens, Georgia. Athens, Georgia for RBM ministry is totally, totally, totally closed. It's an amazing thing. If I try to make friendship or try to gab with somebody, they will not accept me because, because it, it is the word. It closes your environment. And so out of this office, out of this ministry, we're reaching about 100 countries. And we're ministering to thousands of people throughout this, this ministry that we have here in Athens, Georgia. And, uh, uh, and God has blessed abundantly, 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 even in Michigan, Idaho, Kentucky, southeastern area, California. And so if you are persecuted in your environment, <coughs> your city, what I'm saying to you, 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 you flee into another city. You move into another city. Why do you do that? Because if you move into another city, God will then deal with you properly. For verily I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man come, comes and become. In other words, moving your environment affects the ability to be prophetic. And so how did I, how have I adjusted to this gift that moves through my life? I've been to Israel. We're going to Israel on the 22nd of March. I've been to Peru. I've been to Cuba 10, 15 times. I've been to Peru three times now. And so here, here, is, here is the move of God. Here is the power of the Holy Spirit operating. Here is the, the, the leaving the city and moving to where God can use me effectively. And suddenly we're involved in Atlanta. And, uh, and uh, I, I want to be a part of a, of a large church over there that's a blessed church. And uh, that's a move of God. And he'll continue to do that in my life because I have a prophetic life. Okay, let's move on to uh, uh, chapter point, uh, point f five. The prophetic must point against the opposition. If the master of the house is Beelzebub, Jesus said in John 16, in other words, if the master of the house is a demon, you have to understand that they have no authority to destroy your house. I'll read it to you. Uh, it's uh, it's it's in, in it's uh, it, it's it's is this it's in chapter ten verse twenty four, the disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple he be as master and servant of his house. But if they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, the devil, how much more shall they call them into his household? Meaning, you have to, as, as you move into the plan of God to minister the gospel to others, you have to know who's in charge of the house. If the house is in charge of the devil, and the devil is part of that house, Jesus on chapter 10, in chapter 9 of Matthew says, "Return, let the peace return to you. And so, the ruler, you have to approach it this way. If you're ministering in the name of the Lord, and you're speaking, and there's resistance there, you, you take authority over the resistance. 
And then you see if the peace is able to be accepted by the families, the member of the family. If that's the case, but you can't go into a house until you reprimand that which is there. You have to do that. You have to do that as you minister to people on the line of prayer. You have to do that as you, you, before you counsel. You have to reprimand the demon that is, is, is operating in the environment for you to know if they can receive your peace. Now, where is that in the Bible? Where, is, where does Jesus teach that in the Bible? Do you remember before that the Lord, Lord is uh, taken to prison at Gethsemane? Before that, he said, when the Holy Spirit has come, John chapter 16, verse 8, 9, and 10. When the Holy Spirit has come, he'll convict the world of sin, for they do not know me. Convict the world of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you see me no more. Convict the world of judgment, for the ruler is already judged. What do you mean? You, you convict and judge that which is a Beelzebub. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I almost lost my direction here. In other words, you have to repre- you have to judge that which is already judged. Now, conviction of sin, righteousness, and judgment is not appreciated, is not understood, is not comprehended, is not received in this way. But since you are listening to me today, I hope that you pay attention to what I'm saying to you. If you do not judge that which has already been judged, you submit yourself to a demon spirit. You are out of order. You're not following the procedure here. And you have to do this. Because if not, you become afraid that these demons will be governing the thought process in your mind, begin to be accelerated by the presence of these thoughts, and you begin to think negatively before too long, you oppress before too long, you reject it before too long, you're crying because too long you have no energy. Listen to what I'm saying to you. You have to resist the devil and he'll flee. Well, that's the same thing that uh, Jesus is saying on verse 26 of chapter 10 of Matthew. Fear them not, therefore. Fear them. Who? The demons. Fear them not. Fear opens the door for a spirit of, of dis- destruction to come upon your life. Fear comes in to stop you from hearing God and be under his mercy and his grace. And so the three points that Paul, that Jesus speaks in John 16, 8, 9, 10 are very critical and very important. When the Holy Spirit has come, I'm going to my Father, and, and of course, you know, I, and, 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 and you, all judge, judge, you all just upset that I'm going, but if I go... I'll send the Holy Spirit to you. He's referring now to Pentecost. And he says, when the Holy Spirit, he'll convict the world of sin. Without conviction of sin, there's no repentance of sin. Take communion, confess your sins, and he is just and faithful to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And so, conviction of sin. And then he says, conviction of righteousness. Because you see, a forgiven, a forgiven Christian by the Holy Spirit of God and by Jesus when you confess, he forgives you. It's going to have a hard time because the devil is going to accuse, command, and accuse, and accuse, and accuse. And, and, and so if you are under the righteousness of God, then everything changes. Convict the world of righteous. If I go to my father, you see. In other words, we are under the banner of Jesus. We're under the banner of his righteousness. We're under the banner of forgiveness and redemption. We're under the banner of forgiveness and complete unconditional re- forgiveness there's nobody can condemn you you've been washed you've been cleansed you've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ you see when a Christian sins and cannot understand the process of his righteousness it becomes accusatory and the devil robs you of powerful ministry robs you of unbelievable ministry because you are a, a overcoming sinner the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you, washes you as, 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 as white as snow. Amen? And then it says, the Holy Spirit will convict you of judgment. What do you mean by judge? You judge the devil. You say you have no authority in the name of Jesus. I commend you. Live my life. 
leave my vocal cords, leave my ministry. You have no right to come in and bother me and accuse me. Now, the, the, the devil tries to destroy you. And so, the, and so he says in verse 26, And fear not them which kill the body, and but are not able to kill the soul. Fear them that can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Now the soul, this is a prophetic statement in, in this situation. It's a prophetic statement. What, what, what Jesus, what Matthew is saying, that he heard from Jesus, because this is coming from Jesus. This is the teaching of Jesus, and Matthew is simply just repeating it to us. It's simply saying, but rather fear him, who is he? God, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. In other words, it's a battle of eternity here. The prophetic is a, is a weapon that convicts your very soul that you are not going to be defeated and go to hell. All right. Now, after Matthew says these things, uh, Jesus says these things, Matthew recorded. Jesus says one of the most, one of the most revelatory prophetic statements in the Bible. In my opinion, this verse that I'm going to read, which is a uh, uh, verse uh, uh, 27 of Matthew chapter 10, it's got to be one of the most powerful verses of Scripture to those that have a prophetic life. It says this. What I tell you in darkness means in prayer. That is speak you in light openly. What do you mean? So if you are in prayer and you hear the Lord speak to you, your job is to openly tell in the light. Why do I consider this ministry, this, these cameras, this studio here, the life of Andy, Andy Hines that the Lord brought him in to do this. Struggle to get this ministry going. There's, there's thousands of equipment here. We are in the midst of a battle uh, to continue this ministry. It's because your testimony through this ministry is the greatest weapon against the enemy. That is the testimony, the prophetic testimony that I entitled this Bible study this morning. The prophetic testimony. Look, there are people laying down in bed, watching TV, have no ministry to relate to others, very much quiet, isolated. It's not of God. I tell you this, I'm going to die some in some country, and they have to bring me home to do the funeral but I'm going to keep on going until my legs go. I'm not going to downsize uh, uh, this ministry, but I'm going to uh, 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 energize this ministry to be able to continue to be a blessing until the day I die. I have to prepare things, uh, you understand, but I'm not ready to quit. I'm not ready to somehow be quiet. I can't be quiet. I can't park it. I have to do what I'm doing today because... Jesus is saying to me that what, what, that what I tell you in prayer, you speak you in the light. Amen. you got to do it. People who just downsize their ministry and, and lose the power. It's, you look, oh, but uh, I, this is what I like to do. It's not what you like to do. It's what God wants to do through you. Since when you call the shots in direction. Okay. Let's continue. And then, and then Jesus says, uh, the, the, oh, the other second verse, the most famous verse that I in the Bible have uh, affinity to it is Matthew 10, 27, and then Matthew 10, 28, 29, 28 and 29, 27, 28 and 29. Now, verse 29, it's got to be a darling because it puts it all together. It says this, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing means cheap. And one of them shall not fall on the ground 
without your father. In other words, two sparrows that are so cheap, they will not pass away and fall to the ground until God allows it to happen. If that's the case, it simply means that the Lord is in charge of my life to the very core of who I am. That the Lord is in charge of my life and powerfully telling me what I need to hear. The Lord is in charge of my life in my getting up, in my going to bed, in my waking up, in my prayer time in the morning, sometimes during the night. He knows the bills that I have that need to be paid. He, it's in his mind to pay those bills. He's done it for, for 45 years. He has been so faithful in organizing the mission trips throughout the world. He understands my car and all the parts of my car. Do you understand? He knows this ministry. He sent Andy, Andy Hines to our ministry because he is the part that will be doing the transition of downsizing in, in RBM in order to continue serving the Lord. Well, look, what I'm saying to you is that there is a definitely, definitely move of the Spirit of God in my life because I'm under his righteousness. Oh, I have sinned. There's no question about that. No man can say all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I, I know that. And there's all kinds of sins. And what I'm saying to you, I received his grace. I took it within my life. And I'm not going to downsize it in order to curtail the call that God has in my life. All right. I think I said enough to that. Now verse 30. All right. Verse 30 of Matthew chapter 10. Shows how God sees you and, and prophesizes in you the control he has over your life. It says, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. <laughs> I was washing my hair this morning, and I did a little comb here on this side, and some hairs came on the comb, and I said, that 3,649 <laughs> hair uh, there's a 4,000 hair here and a 4,001 hair here. And, uh, in other words, God knows everything about me. Now that is living when you speak into the light what God reveals in the middle of the night. That's prophetic. The prophetic life, the prophetic testimony changes your personal ministry. Today I'll prophesy, I'll speak to a, a lot of people. I already spoke to three people this morning, even before I got up. And before the day is over, I'm going to have five or six more that I'll speak to it. And so I have to, you have to understand that if the devil robs your mouth, you take it back. If the devil accuses you, you take it back. If the devil says that you have no right, you take it back. Because the battle is for him to take your mouth and you say to him, you have no authority to take my mouth, for my mouth is the channel of the prophetic to minister the power of the Holy Spirit where God calls me. Look, when you begin to get involved in this battle to ministry to other people, the devil will just come in <coughs> and destroy and accuse you and, 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 and cause all kinds of commotion. Do not let the devil rob your mouth. Let's go into... Uh, 31, verse 31. Fear you not, therefore. You are more valuable than many sparrows. In other words, what you do, we have to, what do you, what, what do we have to fear? What do you have to fear for serving one who is all-knowing, all-powerful? Why do you afraid? If you are going to live a prophetic life, you need to know that he's all-powerful, all-knowing. And he controls a little sparrow up there in Florida on a tree that will live another 24 hours and will drop to the ground when God says drop it. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men. Now, verse 32 is the end of Bible study this morning. I want to read it very carefully because I told you and I'm saying to you the testimony is critically important. The prophetic 
testimony of your life is critically important. It says, But whoever shall deny me before men, him or I, whom will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. What do you mean? It means that God gives you a word. God gives you a, a channel to minister. God gives you an opportunity for you to bless his life. God gives you a, 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 a cameras, television cameras, to do this and to bless the people of God. And you don't do it. You deny him. He called you to do it, and you deny him. Whosoever deny me before man. In other words, I want to tell you something. I went into a very large meeting at a very large church. And sitting in front of me was the most anointed, rich Baptist preacher in the city of Atlanta. But there's one thing that he does not accept is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And as I was passing by him to go to the pulpit to pronounce a blessing upon that church, God told me to say something. And I did. There were a thousand people present. I said, the Lord said to me, tell him that you speak in tongues. And so I turned around and said, I do speak in tongues. You know what I thought about that? I thought about that, that nobody is ever going to ever respect me and ever invite me to serve him. But let me tell you, my friend. The church received me. And that church is loving me like I haven't been loved by any church ever. Even the, even the, uh, the, the people who clean up the church call me Mr. Bonfim. How you been, Rick? Mr. Bonfim, good to see you. I've never been accepted in love in my whole life. I tell you this. I did not deny him before men. And I'll do it again. It's not that I'm pronouncing that you've got to have tongues. You don't need to. Paul says, you don't have to have it. What I'm saying is, is that when God speaks to me, I will say it. What I hear in my sleep, I will say it in the light. So whosoever shall deny before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. That's not going to happen to me. How about you? God bless you.